Welcome to INS, the International News Service, your source for the most important weird news from across the globe, with news analyst Kevin Harrison, actor, comedian, and musician Mike Wiebe, and professional commentator Brian Camp. INS, the news you need. I'm just sure far away. to remote view kill michael and i has there, a has, ago. there has there ever been a case where somebody remote view killed somebody and the person got uh convicted for it i mean i'm sure before there was things like <laughs> science in order and where people were being accused of being witches per- sure, perhaps. i'm not talking about witches i'm talking about remote viewing i feel like a celestial lawyer might be the the person that we consult. Well, we do. We do question. try it up there. I just didn't know if there was earth laws involved in <laughs> in any of that. Earth law. I invoke earth law. Oh, no. I don't know I, what that means. I can't. I cannot uh, practice earth law anymore. What? Because you're not licensed and you've never gone to law school. I have been to law school and <laughs> I'm not I'm not licensed, but I have been to law school. Wait, where was this law school? Oh, uh, it was the, the Texas Women's University <laughs> School. I mean, I skated out mm-hmm. in front of the building. Yeah, they don't have a law school at Texas Texas Women's University. They have they have laws there, <laughs> and it's a school. Well, okay. Do you think there's any chance? Speaking uh-huh. of skating, bylaws, like... charter bylaws. <laughs> that's oh yeah, that's uh, something that's true. Oh, uh, touche. What's your, what's your uh, question, Brian? So it. In front of the library, both uh-huh. at Texas Women's University University and okay. North Texas State University, or the University of North Texas, depending on what era you choose to acknowledge. It hasn't been North Texas State particular... University since what, like 1985? It's always going to be North Texas State University to me. Yeah. Do you think there is any chance? Like, I'm just thinking of the amount of time spent uh-huh. skating in front of both of those uh-huh. two buildings. During the day, in the uh-huh. morning, the afternoon, at nighttime, uh-huh. and very rarely anyone ever do anything about it. Do you think you could any person could skate at either of those places for more than five minutes without the cops being called? Right now, Indeed. do you think there's any chance w- in today's <laughs> world, Michael? Oh, so versus <laughs> like we're talking like let's just say pre 2010, post 2010. I don't know why that's the marker, but okay, I, that I, does. I just, you know, it's got to. We have to have an arbitrary marker at some point. Woke culture has ruined it. I'm sure it's ruined, <laughs> it's, it's ruined it's skateboarding. Right. I got. Yep. You know what? Uh-huh. I'll stand by that. Neil Blender's rolling in his grave. But I think. Yeah. I think if the the but three literally, of us, he actually made it. He actually made a half pipe out of his grave, and he's not alive. <laughs> so he's just in, uh, just doing tricks in it. Wow. Oh, is is he dead? I don't think he's dead. Is he dead? I don't think he's dead. All right. I don't believe so. I don't uh, believe so either. I don't want yeah. to believe so. So what I'm saying is the best way to experiment is for the three of us to go out to UNT or the or Texas Women's University, both here in Denton, Texas, and uh, skateboard in front of the library until... And the, the challenge is, do the cops get called first or does one of us fall and break something and uh, and the ambulance gets called first? I can still I can still do a backside chunky flip. <laughs> <laughs> what does that entail? Oh my oh. God. <laughs> uh, powerful <laughs> legs, powerful uh-huh. leg muscles. Oh yeah, strong uh-huh. glutes. Oh a yeah, good core. None and, of those things are that. accurate. Good core and, though, probably. And uh, and feet that that travel upon the wind. And a sense of balance, Ooh. and also, and also the will to do one of two things: to skate uh-huh. or to die. Ooh, that was a good game. Skate was it bees that went after you? <laughs> yeah, it's no bees. game for me. It's a it's life for me. Yeah, yeah right. once the time is up, the bees come for Mike. The swarm well, of yeah, bees. And I'm, and I'm not allergic to them like Macaulay Culkin in the movie My Girl, but 
I here's my thing about bees. I don't like them. <laughs> mm. Controversial. But that's why I don't want to get stung by them. What about what about the honey nut Cheerios bee? He seems nice. Oh, that cuck. <laughs> 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 Welcome to the International News Service. We're your hosts. I'm Kevin Harrison. That bee, the Honey Nut oh. Cheerios B was pro vax. Oh, I'm, I'm about that. a big vax high horse. I, well, you went in for your vac- vaccination, Mike, but what happened? Well, when they stuck me with the needle, I uh-huh. flexed my bicep muscle uh-huh. and the and the syringe exploded <laughs> and glass got into the nurse's face. Yeah, it was in the news around here. And they tried to sue me. Did you uh, not get that up in, yeah. in Denton News? Did the Record Chronicle unsurprisingly fail to cover that news story? Yeah, no, they, they only cover local yeah. baseball games now. No, they oh, only the kids cover... kids out of the softball game this week. Pro-vax propaganda. Yep. So let's, welcome to the International News Service. We're your hosts. I'm Kevin Harrison, along with... <laughs> okay, I got it. <laughs> you got uh, it down now, you dick? Yeah. We've only done 126, or well, yeah. this is 127 now of these. That is 126 too many. Well, why didn't I'm we figure listening. this out? I'm immediately. waiting to respond. Most of oh. <laughs> that's most of what acting is, Michael. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's what Robert De Niro himself said. <laughs> so, who are you? I'm uh, the stunt double for Robert De Niro. <laughs> can we mm. can, can we hear your Robert De Niro impression? Oh, oh, what are you? Uh, let me, uh, don't for, let me forget about it. I'm going to forget about it. I'm just, hey, I'm forgetting about it. For the listener, the best part of this is Mike's face. It's all scratched yeah, up. Right. Here's the key to a Robert Dinero impression uh-huh. is you just look like you got to look at your face like you just ate. Like a uh, really, really sour, uh-huh. like a lemon, like a full lemon. Well, okay. no, lemon's too puckered. This is like a... Or uh, couldn't you be imagining an, an octogenarian impregnating a young woman? <laughs> is, it, is it that face yeah, too? Yeah. Well, you, it did happen you recently. Imagine, <laughs> you imagine one of the Rolling Stones having sex now. <laughs> mm, yeah. With a girl that's extremely young. A girl that's younger than whoever's listening to this. It's one of the Rolling oh. Stones having sex with him now. And you go, Ugh. and then you just say, for, you just talk about forgetting things. <laughs> hey, don't forget about it. I'm forgetting about it. Uh, I gotta forget about it. I got a mole on my cheek uh, and I forgot about it. Sure, surely there's been some sort of mafia Alzheimer's spoof at this point. Like some sort of. <laughs> mm. <laughs> hey, forget about me. I gotta go drive my taxi cab. <laughs> so this week. We have a true crime story that I think Mike mm. is going to really like and an artificial intelligence oh story that I think Brian is really going to dislike. Ooh, what, oh, what will no. my feelings be on the true crime story? True crime will story. I be neutral or will I have a, an opinion at all? I think that your reaction to the true crime story is that you're, you're really going to want to get to the bottom of this. Keep in mind, I'm going to do the opposite of whatever you say, more than likely. So this story comes to us from Sora News 24, a Japanese oh, God. news website. Mm, fucking another God. JR West story. I heard that he's retiring and he's making his kid George Soros. I heard he's retiring uh, and letting his kid mm. take over. No, this is Sora. S O R. No, yeah, l- yeah. His kid's a unit. That's what I Did said. You know like that? Soros, like the, him and his kid together. That's oh, plural. I see. <laughs> But I, I just, I don't like what he's done to the country. That's, uh, I, I think that's the thing I like at least about him is what uh, he's done to the country. What, what is mm-hmm. that? Well, he, he pays every, every time. Have you ever seen a protest on TV? Like people like running around doing stuff. You mean like Woodstock? No, something oh. recently like Woodstock 93. Oh yeah, I did see that. Or Woodstock 97. <laughs> well, all the those people. Ones. Uh, yeah, the real good ones. <laughs> all those people are, none of those people like even want to be there. They're all paid by George Soros to show up and act the act as a fool. And the more mm-hmm. fool that you uh-huh. act, the more you get paid. Wow. Which is how he works. Mm-hmm. So basically he's turning this country into a real shithole 
that is unlivable. Let's say you're real sore, right? Uh-huh. You just you you've been you've been hitting the links all day. Okay. And by links, I mean sausage. You were in a hot dog eating tournament. Oh, okay. Your 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 back is sore from being hunched over all day. Uh-huh. So it's you know it's getting kind of late in the night, and you want to go uh-huh. to those really really good uh, late night sports massage places, uh-huh. like the the deep tissue sports massage places that your ex-wife used to get mad at you because you went to and then eventually divorced you and talked about him in the suit because she doesn't fucking understand that sometimes you get injuries and you need to get them worked on and that there's not a the injuries don't like work on clocks the injuries Uh, don't have day the injuries the injuries don't have a nine to five job Mm -hmm. injuries stay with you injured the entire time and just because of sports clinic that's what it is a sports Uh clinic Mm -hmm. is is based in a downtown area Uh, uh, oh i'm sorry a not gentrified area that when you go there it doesn't Uh that's it's all it means is you're going Uh to get hurt and maybe i'm trying to support businesses that aren't you know over on rodeo drive or whatever is this a an asian fantasy themed sports clinic oh I don't. I don't love <laughs> Western medicine. I don't okay. love what Western medicine's done. Okay, right, sure, fair. So, yeah, th- this is a this is a, a a place that that doesn't adhere to the mm-hmm. big pharma uh-huh. <laughs> of our current Western medicine, right? And yeah, they do all kinds of different. I don't know how they do it over there. I'm not from there. I'm learn. I'm learning too. I'm learning about <laughs> another culture too. Hmm? So anyway, you have to go through a real downtown part of area uh-huh. to get down there. And then say somebody's trying to get down there and there's a big old protest. Oh, I see. And they're screaming mm-hmm. and I have to park at some we weird place. Came around to this. Keep going. Mm-hmm. And I'm honking and I'm yelling at them. Uh-huh. Uh, we're getting into a whole thing. And they're in the come to find out <clears throat> none of those people care about uh-huh. whatever, like people i don't know human the rights environment. Hum- yeah, the environment human rights, human rights. Uh-huh. oh people should be allowed to be alive it's bullshit <laughs> these are these are actors these are a I bunch see. of these are a bunch of, they they go around to every community college uh-huh. production of you know rent Rigadoon and, and rent and our town and they hand out like flyers and go like hey you want an acting gig and here's the thing about acting it's Rigadoon. <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> and they they go around and they uh, hand out flyers that say <laughs> you know hey you want a paid acting gig and, and granted some of these kids don't know they're hungry for work i get right, it you know right. it took it took it took me a good six to eight months before i blew up in the acting game <laughs> and and, and so they, they take this job and the job uh, is like uh you know disgruntled barista with hairy armpits mm. carrying or you know sign carrier and it says Uh must must have must have stretched (laughs) earlobes dreadlocked dreadlocked white person Uh tribal tats a plus (laughs) so but so that's a big gig for them and yeah and it just messes up my whole thing and i show up to my appointment late and i don't get to work with the clinician that i normally like to work with Mm. Who, who is that? I cannot pronounce her name. <laughs> right. Probably beside the point, too. It's I would not think. that I forget it; right. it's that I can't pronounce it. Okay. Okay. Well, you're you're probably in such pain too that it interferes oh, with your my ability. Oh God! To, I mean, Are you, you really gotta me? you gotta get you gotta get the work done, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I gotta yeah. get it done, and and uh-huh. thanks to this, thanks to this guy, this George Soros guy, uh-huh. I am. I am in a ton, a ton of pain and not, and physical pain too, but there's also, I don't know, I guess you call it chi. Like my uh-huh. chi is bottled up and not released. Oh, I see. <laughs> That's right. There's, is it one of your meridians blocked? Is that I think, your, yeah, your, I think they like a, like a lower like central meridian, like a, yeah, like a, yeah, sure. My chakra is all junked up. It's uh-huh. all gunked up. Oh uh, yeah. One of my chakras is is blocked. 
Uh oh, mm -hmm. you don't want that. Mm -mm. So anyway, I hate George Soros, and that is why. Okay, <laughs> glad we glad we came around to that. So this comes to us from Sora News Twenty Four, a Japanese <laughs> news website devoted to George Soros. That's so weird. Yeah. Well, he owns it. He bought it. Okay, I get it. So as we have learned on the podcast before, in addition to Mike's other health ailments, he really likes to discuss the healing powers of urine. This oh, well, that's, no, that's a different massage parlor entirely. <laughs> uh, okay. But that's a different clinic entirely, a different part of town. <laughs> go, uh, go on. Okay. So this makes me wonder if Mike hasn't been in, in Sapporo, Japan recently, where police are baffled by a master thief who hit 37 targets this year with 16 of them in the last half of May alone. Apparently, this thief has been going into men's restrooms in public parks around Sapporo and stealing urinal drain grates. Oh, cool. Now, mm. for those who don't know, I mean, Brian clearly does. But for those who don't know, urinal drain grates are little metal grates that sit over the drains in the bottoms of urinals to ensure that urinal drains don't get clogged with anything and which likely get peed on hundreds of times Every week, the yeah, city keep cigarette butts out of the pipes. Yeah, cigarette gum. Mm -hmm. Any gum in there? Chaw, fecal matter. Unks of, yeah, yeah. If you made a bunch of shit, got, yep. got mixed up, or uh, there was a, big, a line, a big bunch of broccoli mm -hmm. <laughs> that you took in there to you while you're going to take a piss while you're uh, eating a bowl of broccoli, right. and then you, somebody <laughs> somebody brushed you and you spilled all the broccoli in there. Mm -hmm. That's a it's crying shame. shame. And you just don't want to eat the broccoli after it. It's just broccoli doesn't taste good in that right. environment. Well, okay. okay. That's fair. A, th a thicker lanced mass probably yeah. wouldn't make it through like a, like a thick mass that you've lanced. Yeah, a thick right. mass of, of yeah. just, yeah. Uh, you, if you're lancing, if you're doing a little bit of Dr. Pimple Poppering in <laughs> yeah, do it, taking care of a cyst. Right. Uh, uh, yeah. It's more of a, it's more of like a, like a, more like a mayonnaise than a an oil. Mm, like a yeah. More yeah. Of a that's thick... not going to make it through that great. You can now you can use your hands and push it through the grate. I've done yeah. that. But that's but just if gonna... I, somebody else didn't do it. I'm like, yeah. oh man, you got to clean this shit up. And so <laughs> it's like a Samaritan thing. I'll I'll smash it through the grate. So unlike Brian and Mike, I've never spent much time inspecting urinal grates. But what apparently. Are you doing? What are you doing in there? Yeah. Playing with, playing with yourself? You didn't get out. <laughs> got your ass. Doing my business. I got, I got your ass. <laughs> I said, playing with yourself. <laughs> got your ass. No, I just pee and get out. Wash my hands. Leave. Yeah, whatever. So, uh, I, uh, apparently... <laughs> Most uh -huh. urinal grates aren't even screwed in, so they can mm -hmm. be removed very easily by hand if, you know, you don't mind how gross they are. Police say they're having trouble pinning down a motive since new urinal grates cost around 1,000 yen or about $7.50, and there's really no market mm -hmm. for used urinal grates, and they're basically worthless as scrap metal because they don't weigh very much. They say this means the motivation is either vandalism or a very peculiar fetish, but we're not here to kink shame. Uh, police in Sapporo are asking park goers to report any suspicious persons or missing urinal grates. I've thought of a third suspect. Oh, and who's that? Somebody who works for the metal grate company. Oh. Oh. The they probably clean company. up pretty good. Yeah. 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 So they're just reselling, they're just polishing them up and reselling yeah, them? just throw them away and give them a new one. Or, yeah, maybe, yeah, actually, resell them. Yeah, because mm -hmm. that way you don't have to remake remake them. You just put them back in the little package. Yeah. Steam them. You steam them. You seem to know a lot about this. I mean, it's common knowledge. You have it. I right? know you, notice you haven't made a movie in a while. Who are you working for these days? Uh, well, that I don't. My movies aren't about piss grates. Well, no, but I mean, you know, which, who, what's your job again? What do you? <laughs> what kind of company are you work in now? Which one? I have me. You know, I'm multifaceted. Yeah. Where are you going yeah. with this? 
I was trying to get you to say you work for a urinal great company. I don't work for a urinal great company. If a mm. urinal great company helps fund movies, works for oh, a, I see. a great urinal company. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it's actually called Great Urinal Greats. I see. <laughs> And they like the company I work for, and it's kind of fun because they make like different colored ones. And there's like uh, the great grape urinal grape is a right. purple one, you know? Wow. Yeah. And you've seen the have you seen the soccer ball urinal insert? Have you been confronted with? Oh that yeah, before? yeah. The target yeah. insert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. Kevin probably never saw it because he doesn't I, look at anything. He's too busy doing leak. something else in there. <laughs> Pee in and washing my hands and getting the fuck out. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and when you're peeing in there, you happen to notice a little bit more. And when you're doing something else, you don't notice as much because you're too busy daydreaming about Joan Collins. <laughs> Glad we could bring up a Joan Collins reference from two weeks ago. Three weeks ago. I think Joan Collins has been brought up every week. <laughs> <laughs> Joan weeks Collins is. <laughs> I'm just saying uh, I think that I think that somebody's probably making a lot of money in this. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. is one of those things. It's I seven fifty a pop. I do occasionally pick up an odd item or look at a odd thing and think to myself, oh, I wonder who makes that. You <laughs> yeah. know? Uh-huh. You ever do that? You ever you ever just think like, oh, somebody somebody decided uh-huh. that they were gonna make door stoppers. Okay. Somebody's okay. like, somebody's like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make a bunch of door stoppers. Okay. And they, that's their whole living. They, and they, it's less of like uh, finding a manufacturing plant and all that, which is a whole thing unto itself. Right. How would you right. ever do that? But more than that, somebody making a decision. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make door stoppers. And you know what I want? I want them to go. Boy, <laughs> It's fun because yeah. there were probably door stoppers that didn't go boy before, you know. Yeah, oh yeah, they freak, got the solid metal ones. Freak dogs yeah. out and stuff like that, right? But somebody was like, ah, I got an idea. And, there, and there's there's things that are even more mundane, like right. urinal grates. Mm-hmm. True, true. I always wondered, did somebody just make that decision? the the fateful decision to make door stoppers or urinal grates uh-huh. but it was 30 years ago and for one month some factory production line just made urinal grates or just made door stoppers and then somebody just had a warehouse of them somewhere and they haven't really made a urinal grate in decades and yeah. now this is oh, somebody wow. trying to create a run on urinal grates right or to, or to necessitate a new design to make them secure right this is all about Saying creating a need for a new style of urinal grate that he has a giant or she has a giant warehouse of locking urinal grates waiting yeah. creating this is, the market. This is really the episode of elaborate explanations. That mm-hmm. makes me think that here's why just uh, this is okay. reason number seven hundred uh-huh. why America is better than every other country. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> you know why this wouldn't happen in uh, America? People stealing urinal grates. Why is that? This answer is simple. Uh-huh. The Second Amendment. Hmm? I Thank don't, you. I don't. I don't think people are protecting nope. their urinal grates with. If, if I were course. to see someone pulling a urinal grate uh, out, uh-huh. out of like a Wendy's, uh-huh. or a Arby's, mm-hmm. or a uh-huh. Applebee's, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. or a Bucky's, oh, so you yeah. only go to you only go to places named with a a possessive. <sighs> That's right. Well, that's why we had that little open. That's why there's that little space in the doors between mm-hmm. stalls and stuff in every American <laughs> restroom. It's so you can always you can keep an eye on the urinal grate. Keep an eye. I will pull my weapon so fast. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I'll, I'll put it up to their neck and I'll go whisper into their ear. I'm standing my ground because I don't want to stand in your piss. That's a, a, that'd be a good shirt. It's, okay. it's a gun, and it says, uh-huh. I stand my ground so I don't have to stand in your piss. I think that's a fantastic shirt. That's a shirt <laughs> idea. Put it on the list. Be, check out the INS store on Redbubble. 
We'll right. uh, probably never have that shirt, but still. But I want. But I think it should be the Pink Panther holding the gun. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. I'm not really sure why <laughs> how that factors in. It's either a shirt or a confusing birthday cake you send to someone. Yeah. I stand my ground to not stand in your piss. You know, it is is funny that all this piss talk is coming out of a place in Japan called Sapporo, which is the beer. Oh, yeah, that's right. That I like so much. It is pretty good. I love love Sapporo. It is really one of my favorite beers. I don't drink a lot of beer, but that is one of my favorite beers. Weirdly priced. Sometimes you find it and it's reasonably priced, and sometimes for some unknown reason, it's three times as much. Yeah, I, I, will not, I will never pay much money for it because it is no. like, yeah. it, while it is vastly better than a domestic beer over here, in my in my opinion, it also it's also a beer that tastes really good with certain food. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, or I, maybe I've just connected it with that with like Japanese food or something like that. But yeah. and uh, but you're never gonna just find it at a not Japanese place either. And maybe that's right. when it's expensive, but it's also not, it's not supposed to be an expensive beer. It's not uh-huh. like, it, it's easy to find convenience stores will carry it sometimes. Yeah. It's like a, like a, any convenience store that has like a, that boasts an above average beer selection. And I don't think either of us or any, any of us are what you would call. Thank you for including me, Brian. Well, I'm realizing that I wasn't like, well, Kevin didn't drink a lot of beer either. I don't think any of us are like, I, I, if you want to be someone who cares a whole lot about beer, that's great if that's what you want to do, but I don't get that at all. Yeah. Like, I, don't, I care about I don't cool understand. things like Dr. Strange. Yeah, that makes <laughs> sense. And his adventures in the astral world. Right. It's hard to cast you... spells when you're wasted. <laughs> well, yeah. well, it is true. You're telling me. The, I do remember, I've been getting a little bit of nostalgia lately, like uh-huh. weird little nostalgia flashes. And yeah. I did have one. Right as we right as we were talking about this uh-huh. about beer about remember remember when you first like it, not not even when you're 21 but when you first like maybe right before you're 21 and you had access to all the beer or right when you first turned 21 and you could go uh-huh. into a beer store and get literally any kind and it just right. seemed like the most exciting thing on the oh, face it was, it was of the intimidating planet. yeah. It was so great. exciting and, and exhilarating, and you're like, I want to try all the all the things. Right. I think the first one mm-hmm. I tried was Moosehead, based on the name and can design, and then it was just super skunky. I, I don't think I could even finish the, the can. Can you figure out malt liquor really is all you need? <laughs> yeah. Blue Bowl and Red Bowl. Mi- uh, <laughs> Mickey's. Yep. The little, the little, the, the little, uh, what they call those? The little bottles of Mickey's that come in a oh yeah, big, big, big mouth, Mickey's big mouth, yeah, yeah. big, big mouth, mouth. Yeah. Grades, big mouth, yeah. So, our next story comes got, to us. Oh wait, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Did we have yeah. more, we uh, more '90s what? beer talk? I'm sorry. Continue. They, first I, of all, they still make Schlitz, so. Malt liquor is yeah. malt liquor. Yeah. I know my question is I this is all the way back to the the urinal grates. Is there a what percentage chance is that mm. is it that this is just going to turn into an art installation? Ooh, yeah. That will vie well, to be a story on this podcast somewhere down the road. To well, I'm not grade. I'm not gonna say no. If it does, we're definitely gonna run a an update on this. Right. It'd what be like a mobile, makes... right? Yeah, or a mobile, or he makes like an Iron Man style suit. <laughs> be where so he's, awesome. he's like, it's just like, he's like, like covered bunch of like piss Iron Man. Wow. That's right. With in a room full of just different phalluses urinating yeah. on the Iron Man costume. That is a brilliant idea. I, I mean, I am would... um, Iron Man. <laughs> Nobody would that... want to touch him. Well, that's the thing. Criminals yeah. fear him because yeah. they're, they, they're they're all icked out by him. Yeah, I, I, I think there's something to that. Why don't you pick on somebody your person, own size and then? Oh the no, only it's person Piss Iron that Man. would be able to. The only person that would be able to defeat him uh-huh. is the one man who's not afraid of piss. Maybe the one man who consumes piss. Oh no. Huh? Maybe there's an arc villain. Who this would that guy. be? 
Arch. Is it Arc or Arch? Arch. Arch. Uh, Arch. Yeah. It's Archangel, so. but Arch villain. Yeah. An Arch villain to this Iron Man of Piss. And who yeah, is that? It's, it's easy to beat up criminals when they're cowering in fear. It's <laughs> not so not so easy when that criminal is licking him. Mm-hmm. All Getting over his stronger by the second. Body. Let's. I'll just let everyone marinate in oh, that just, piss. Let's just let's just soak in that for a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Right? <laughs> so our next story comes to us from the Motion Picture Trade Magazine Variety. I oh, already yeah. hate they this write story. About Jack Wharton stuff all the time. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. They Zero write stars. A variety of topics. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, are they? Can they still put out? Are they allowed to write for a variety right now? Oh, oh uh, yeah, because that's not that's writing about motion pictures. It's not writing for motion so pictures. If you're in the Screenwriters Guild, that's uh-huh. who this is, right? Is that no, the group? Variety's What's the group? Just no, a variety is journalists. No, no, no. The group that's that's striking. Oh, uh, the, the, the Writers Guild of America. Yeah. Okay. So the Writers Guild of America, they are only for moving picture writers or for all writers. No. Yeah, Move. I think it's audiovisual. If you are in the Writers Guild of America, uh-huh. but you also are someone who writes for Variety on a freelance uh-huh. basis. Okay. Are you crossing the picket line if you, even though that is not tied to your your union loyalty, are you allowed to make money tangentially on the craft that you are supposed to not be doing when it's for a different output? You, uh, as as a former union member, you can you can work outside of your union. You just have to pay union dues and support your union for work within the union. Right. So so all these writers on strike, they could write for other things and be just fine. Well, nobody pays for writing anymore, which is part of the problem. But well, do people pay a, for the variety writers? They pay something. They don't pay all right. all. I bet they're all members of that. Don't you think? They're all probably would think not. That they're they're all... probably have full time jobs writing for variety. Mm, I bet they have a variety of jobs. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> So Black Mirror is an anthology television program that's sort of a modern update of the Twilight Zone, and it uses technology to speculate or comment on contemporary issues. The you show know where the name comes from Black Mirror. Yeah, it's yeah. The, the it's your TV image reflecting your TV screen reflecting back at you once the I believe it's your phone, over. but yes, the okay. same. Yeah, a screen. Okay, hmm. so. The show does not shy away from controversy, and given the recent WGA strike that Brian brought up and the claims Ah. that AI would soon be replacing writers, the creator of Black Mirror, Charlie Brooker, conducted an experiment. He wanted to know if the AI chatbot, ChatGPT, could write an episode of Black Mirror. Brooker said, quote, I've toyed around with ChatGPT quite a bit. The first thing I did was type generate black mirror episode. And it comes up with something that at first glance reads plausibly. Unfortunately, he added that it quote on second glance is shit because all it's done is look up all the synopses of black mirror episodes and sort of mush them together. Brooker said, quote, if you dig a bit more deeply, you go, Oh, there's not actually any real original thought here. However, it's not all bad. The Black Mirror creator said the exercise helped him realize some cliches he'd been unconsciously relying on too much. Quote, I had written lots of episodes where someone goes, quote, uh, there's two quotes in here, but it's fine. Where someone goes, oh, I was inside a computer the whole time. While Brooker said the script was terrible, he was grateful for the learning experience, adding that it was, quote, just a sort of nice cold glass of water in the face. Anyway. Season six of Black Mirror dropped about two weeks ago in just a couple days from when we're recording. Uh, I've only seen the pilot episode, but, you know, check it out if it's your thing. You've only ever seen the pilot episode of the very first one or the new season? No, of the, the I haven't seen the, the new season's not out. But well, I've only seen the, about the, about a pilot? The, the one about the prime minister screwing the pig. Who's a pilot? He's a pilot. Is it a pilot? Pilot? Like a commercial air force. Oh, it's or... like a play on when pigs fly. I get it. Yeah, the yeah. pig was a That's pilot. Funny. And the prime minister 
So the pig was a pilot. And the prime minister had to have sex with him, mm, or else well, huh. somebody who's being held hostage would. It's like uh, the Muppet Show. Killed. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Yeah. I don't show well, that one as much. I I use Chat GPT for to. Uh-huh. I mean, it, that's kind of similar to what that dude said. Was I I was working on some copy for some uh-huh. sort of thing, and I loaded some stuff in, and I. I used a, some of it, but it's more, it's helpful when you're trying to do something really formal and your brain or my brain yeah. doesn't really think in those terms and like resume speak or mm. some sort of formality. You can plug stuff in there and it'll, it'll dump something out and you have to change it around to make it work within the scenario. Cause it doesn't quite get the scenario, but, um, I haven't really done anything too creative with it, but what's uh-huh. a show? What's a show that you would like to see uh, Chat GPT do? Okay, I had a similar question uh, that I was going to ask, but maybe we can combine the two. Which is, what would your Black Mirror episode be that if you, if you wrote it? Oh well, my Black Mirror episode would be what happens when a guy gets actually rewarded like the computer says mm-hmm. he's going to get rewarded when he okay. finishes the end of one of those games and he doesn't fap. He doesn't come. Oh, he doesn't, he doesn't uh, bust <laughs> after, 30, after like... 30 seconds. He doesn't bust. Right. Yeah. And, How long does he last? Well, he lasts a good 42 seconds. Oh, wow. It bets that you're going to, that you're going to bust in 30 seconds, but you last 42 yeah, and then you know what? You don't get anything out of it. I think there should be a world where that you actually a scenario where um, uh-huh. like maybe all these like sexy girls come in because they're like, oh, you you didn't bust for it took you that long. Whoa, mm-hmm. let's 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 uh-huh. try and help you out. And they come in and they go, hey, look at look at all those Doctor Strange comics you have <laughs> up in there. That's so cool. Uh-huh. They go. Why don't you take your trousers off? <laughs> sure. Uh, are they British? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. They have. Uh, they're, hot. they're hot. I'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah. They're real hot. Yeah, they're they're British because it's Black Mirror because it's like British. Show. Oh, that is true. Yeah, like, yeah. Is that British? Oh, oh, yeah, it's oh, oh, Channel 4. Oh, yeah, Channel 4. <laughs> take your trousers off. Oh, wait. Hold on. You know who's British? Hey. Joan Collins. Oh. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> I did not know that she was British. I thought she was just like she's British. transatlantic. No. She doesn't know think she's br- mid-Atlantic. She's British. Well, we gotta, you know, we need to uh, fact check this. Well, what would be a show you would like to see Chat GPT do? And I'll she's English. And I'll bu- I'll bust it out. I'll ask Chat GPT what okay. the show should be. Uh, <laughs> everyone's familiar with the A Team. I'm okay. sorry, I was thinking like that's a we the, ooh, we talked about. Maybe we should do a show that we've covered and get to know. Oh yeah. Podcast, maybe Quantum Leap. Okay, Ooh. generate There's plenty of episodes of that. Quantum... Make it a sexy Quantum Leap episode. Yeah. You know, Kevin, I would like to see uh, uh-huh. an episode of Black Mirror where the creator of a show asks <laughs> AI to write an episode uh-huh. of his show. Oh my god! And he laughs at it and thinks it's such garbage, but it turns uh-huh. out everyone thinks it's exactly like the show he makes all the time anyway. Because <laughs> what he does is garbage. And he's just real sad about it. Yeah. Damn, that's pretty good. But then they go and they go, I wonder what the chat GPT looks like. And they, they open up the computer and a little version of him looks up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got I wrote generate a quantum leap episode that is sexy. What else do we want to happen in it? I think Al should Al should have to get a second job working the fast food sorry the the drive through at a fast food restaurant a Jack in the Box. Can the conflict be racism? Okay, it's very quantum leapish. Yeah, I've done a couple of those, so it would fit the the theme. And can it have a Pontiac Firebird in it? Ooh, okay, oh, yeah. He should have to leap into a Pontiac Firebird. He, he never did that, did he? No. So he always did leap into a into human, a human, right? Right. I think I, there might have been one weirdo episode where he it was something else, right. but like... Oh, I think he was like a monkey or something once. Yeah, yeah, like a rhesus monkey or something. Yeah. Oh, boy. Um, What do we want him to leap into? He he leaps into a, a what is it, Pontiac Trans Am? Pontiac, we'll make it a Pontiac... Oh, no, Firebird. 
Firebird, I'm sorry. Yeah. I think a Firebird's a type of Pontiac. Man, I've forgotten a lot about Pontiac. I think been that's around right. for a while. And then I'm just, I'm I'm, my only addition is that at the very, very end, he breaks mm-hmm. fourth wall and talks to the audience. Okay. That's very good. I'll tell you what we did. Uh, what we decided was okay. generate a quantum leap episode that is sexy. Al should okay. have to get a second job working at a drive-through. I wrote at McDonald's. Sam experiences okay. racism. Sam leaps into a Pontiac Firebird. At the very end, <laughs> Scott Bakula breaks the fourth wall and addresses the audience. Okay, this is our episode of Quantum Leap. Okay, real quick before you start, yeah. Mike, I just want to clarify the audience that the Trans Am is actually an upgraded package of the firebird mm. oh wow. the model is firebird and just trans am is just the best version of it so I mean, anyway. trans am is short for trans america oh wow look at oh, that. Wow. Yeah. crazy <laughs> some, i'm surprised some right-wing ding dongs haven't gone out and smashed the shit out of one <laughs> just shooting old trans ams with a shotgun bought one and just lit it on fire <laughs> that's right all right i'm hitting Dang. okay the, the title right. of this is Quantum Seduction. This is so Ooh, quick. Yeah. Act one. Dr. Sam Beckett leaps into the body of a charismatic young man named Mike, who works as a car <laughs> mechanic. As he regains Wait, his... that's not a trans I, I did. Listen, this, I, I, you, you heard what I wrote. Ooh, maybe they meant it. Maybe they thought it was trans, trans-American. So this is a story about... Maybe. Maybe. Uh, gender right, fluidity. Let's see what and... happens. Okay, so act one, Sam Beckett leaps into the body of a charismatic young man named Mike who works as a car mechanic. As he regains his senses, Sam discovers he is in the middle of a steamy affair with a beautiful and seductive woman named Lisa. However, (laughs) Sam soon realizes that there is more to this leap than just romance. Act 2. Sam discovers that Lisa is involved in a dangerous smuggling operation, and her lover, a local crime boss is forcing her to participate. Al appears as Sam's holographic guide and informs him that he must gather evidence against the crime boss to protect Lisa and bring him to justice. In order to do so, Sam and Al hatch a plan to expose the criminal activities. Act 3. To gather evidence, Sam infiltrates a high-stakes poker game where the crime boss and his associates are present. As he navigates the tense atmosphere, Sam experiences racism directed towards him from some of the players. (laughs) The racism challenges Sam to confront prejudice head on in a, in a fight for justice. I didn't even know. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Meanwhile, Al You're finds so himself in a difficult situation back at the Quantum Leap Control Center. Due to budget cuts, Al is forced <laughs> to take a second job working at the drive through at a local McDonald's to support the project. As he juggles responsibilities, <laughs> Al's encounters with customers at the drive through become comedic moments throughout the episode. <laughs> This is really good. <laughs> this is really good. Act five. In the main storyline, Sam's cover is almost blown when he is cornered by the crime boss's henchmen. Through his quick thinking and resourcefulness, uh-huh. Sam manages to outsmart them and escape. He retrieves the necessary evidence and delivers it to the local police during the crime boss arrest. We could have used a little bit more detail in there. In the <laughs> final act, as Sam th- prepares to leap out, he finds himself in the body of a Pontiac Firebird driver at a race track with Damn a newfound it. passion for racing sam participates in a thrilling race pushing the limits of the car and experiencing the adrenaline rush despite facing fierce competition sam manages to win the race leaving a sense of fulfillment and accomplishment which normally they don't have two full leaps but then yeah, there's an epilogue right. Right. just as sam prepares to leap again he breaks the fourth wall addressing the audience directly <laughs> got bacula the actor who portrays sam shares a heart Heartfelt message about the importance of confronting racism <laughs> and fighting for justice in the real world. He encourages viewers him. to take inspiration from Sam's leaps and make a positive impact in their own lives. With a nod to the camera, Sam leaps to his next adventure, leaving the audience inspired and ready to face their own challenges. Note, the episode wow. seeks to address themes of romance, danger, racism, and justice. <laughs> while incorporating elements of comedy, action, and Scott Bakula's connection with the audience. <laughs> it strives to entertain while promoting awareness and empathy. Wow. That's pretty good that stuff. Is... That's a powerful hour of television. Yeah. And I am I am convinced, had that episode been made, had it been inserted into the Quantum Leap lineup, uh-huh. it would be most people's top five favorite episodes. Yeah. Of Quantum. It would be remembered as... No, that one was really good. 
it, yeah. it stood out from the rest. You it just, would have been discussed specifically on Get to Know Your Podcast. The moments of comedy with Al in the drive through trying to get people's fries <laughs> ready while talking to Sam. I mean, that writes itself where he's like, I oh, this say is he's too talking. Hot. And then Sam's like, yeah. you're telling me this is too hot. I've got this girl all over me and this guy that wants to kill me and he's racist and and then he's like i wasn't talking about you i was talking about the fries <laughs> have you shot yourself yeah i'm gonna shoot myself now for the podcast uh leave that part out so no. why <laughs> mike just shot himself <laughs> with rock salt uh, so that wraps up another week of the International News Service. Find us across social media at International News Pod. Email us at internationalnewspod at gmail.com. This is your last call for Patreon. I'm going to stop subscriptions on June 30th. And you have if you sign up by then, you'll have 30 days to uh, listen to all of our bonus stories. 30 about days 50. in 30 ways. If you want. Mm. Uh, so check out the INS merch store at Redbubble. And don't forget to check out our subreddit. At r slash ins pod. Can I plug we'll something? Week. Yeah, I, I guess so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we just got test pressings in for Ooh. the Riverboat Gamblers re-release of something to crow about. Nice. Oh. How about coming nice. out in the fall? I haven't heard them yet. Ian just Ian got them and texted right before this episode. So what? Are, what are the particulars of the vinyl and the like? What Ooh. are the? What are the? Isn't it you want heavier vinyl? Is that one, the thing? Uh, you want you want heavy. You want thick vinyl, and thick is you spelled with two Vinyl is a, an inch thick. You want mm. uh, eighty-one? I yes. I I don't know. Honestly, one hundred twenty gram. I think is the. I, are they substantial? They're chunky. They're chunky meats. Uh, it's right. a it's a girthy twelve inches. Wow. Who who uh what. Where are you? What labels put it out? Are y'all doing it? We are it putting or? it out our very damn selves with a group. Uh, Good for you. With a with this with the uh, we've got partnered up with a company that's sort of helping helping us do it. Not a record label, nice. but like um, uh, a group that's kind of helping us. But it's it's not going to be until the fall that it comes out. But we are also going to be doing a series of of something to crow about reunion shows where we play the oh, album nice. in its entirety and maybe we'll be coming to your town we're trying to book some of these towns and stuff right now but i um, excited and looking forward to it and it should be a hoot and a holler nice uh, check, for the listeners check our social media and uh, check out the Riverboat Gamblers Thank you for listening to the International News Service. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. INS, the news you need.